Good evening, everyone. This is Keith First with SHN Sports, where tonight we're going to have a 6 p.m. start time for the Pflugerville Lady Panthers and your Eastview Lady Patriots. Currently right now, I think uh, both teams finishing up, warming up. And uh, we're going to... Uh, we're going to uh, uh, basically go ahead and go over the lineups for today. With Flugerville, Flugerville Panthers, they're led off by shortstop number one, Zania Reese, followed by batting second left field, number eight, Abby Nunez. Batting third, playing pitcher, number 25, Lauren Jackson. Batting fourth, catcher, number six, Nalia Mackey. Batting fifth, third base, number five, Braylon Williams. Batting sixth, center fielder, number seven, Abby Lemons. Batting seventh, first base, number 22, Noemi Jackson. Now batting eighth is designated player, number two, Bella Paloma. And batting ninth is right fielder, number 13, Tiana Fagan. The flex player tonight playing second base is number 20, Bella Mendiola. Subs for Flugerville are number three, uh, Jessica Domingu, number four, Danny Nunez, and number 10, Delilah Acuna. The Flugerville Lady Panthers are coached by head coach Matt Peterson and assistant coaches Angela Fries and Summer Harper. Now for your Lady Patriots tonight, Leading off at shortstop, number six, Mandy Rose. Batting second, playing left field is number five, Bella Guajardo. Batting third, and playing second is number one, Alina Torres. Batting cleanup, center fielder, number four, Izzy Andana. Batting fifth, playing first, number 16, Kendall Sanford. Batting sixth, catcher, number three, Kenley Cervenka. Batting seventh, Designated player, number 12, Olivia Garza. Batting eighth, right fielder, number 17, Clara Ortega. Batting ninth, playing third, number two, Jaden Gonzalez. And the flex tonight is the pitcher, number 18, Haley Pena. Tonight's subs for your Eastview Lady Patriots are number nine, Ella Adams. Number 10, Colby Trapp. Number 11, Kenzie Guajardo. Number 15, Alana Rivera. And number 24, Addie Cruz. Followed up by number 34, Dakota Eshelman. The coaches tonight for your Eastview Lady Patriots are head coach, Kerry Wright. Assistant coaches, Shane Moses, Adam Lichtenstein, and Kyle Sanford. And we're just about getting ready to, uh, the teams are coming in. Uh, Eastview's already in the dugout, and uh, Pflugerville's finishing up, warming up, and we're going to have coaches go to the uh, plate here and go over the ground rules, and then we'll go ahead and get started. But uh, we're going to come right back again here for a 6 p.m. start. Welcome back to uh, Patriot Park, or as you can see, Coach Kerry Wright, Coach Matt Peterson are at the dish going over the ground rules, and then uh, the voice of Patriot Park, Scott Trapp, is going to be uh, announcing the teams here in just a second. 
It's a real windy day today. You can tell by the uh, the flags out there. The it seems like it's changing a little bit. It's been blowing out to the left field, and now it's blowing straight in. But needless to say, the wind is blowing pretty pretty hard today. But of course, being up here at uh, Eastview, it's no surprise. Been plenty of windy days up here on this hill. So we're going to turn it over to the PA announcer here in just a second. Again, this game is rescheduled from yesterday. A lot of storms coming through Central Texas. And the, and the district decided in the best interest of the teams that they'd uh, play it today here. That's why the game's at 6 o'clock, just, uh, just varsity only today. Eastview count today's game has four games left in district before playoffs start. Got Pflugerville today, got at Hendrickson on Friday. Uh, next Tuesday is going to be at Georgetown, and then next Friday, the Lady Patriots going to be wrapping up district play here at Patriot Park against the Pflugerville Connolly team. Then the real fun begins. So we'll be right back. When we do, the PA announcer will be announcing the teams. For the Patriot Park for today's matchup between the visiting Pflugerville Panthers and your Eastview Patriots. We're going to get started just as soon as the Pflugerville Panthers uh, are able to come out of the dugout and we will introduce the visiting team starting lineup. started here. Starting lineup for the visiting team, Fluterville Panthers. Leading off and playing shortstop, number one, Zaniah Reese. Batting second and playing left field, number eight, Abby Nunez. Batting third and pitching, number 25, Lauren Jackson. Batting fourth and playing catcher, number six, Nalia Mackey. Nalia Mackey, my apologies. Batting fifth and playing third base, number five, Braylon Williams. Batting sixth and playing center field, number seven, Abby Lemons. Batting seventh and playing first base, number 22, no, no. Noemi Jackson. I'll get it right. Batting eight and your designated player, number two, Bella Palomo. Batting ninth and playing right field, number 13, Tiana Fagan. The, the flex for tonight, number 20, Bella Mendiola. Your reserves for the Pflugerville Panthers. Number three, Jessica Dominguez. Number four, Danny Nunez. And number 10, Delilah Acuna. Pflugerville Panthers are led by head coach Matt Peterson, assistant coach Angela Freeze, and assistant coach Summer Harper.
And now, tonight's lineup for your East Q Patriots. Leading off and playing shortstop, number six, Matty Rose. Playing second and playing left field, number five, Bella Guajardo. Batting third and playing second base, number one, Alina Torres. Batting cleanup and playing center field, number four, Izzy Andana. Batting fifth and playing first base, number 16, Kendall Sanford. Batting sixth and catching, number three, Kidley Cervenka. Batting seventh and your designated player, number 12, Olivia Garza. Batting eighth and playing right field, number 17, Clara Ortega. Batting ninth and playing third base, number two, Jaden Gonzalez. And the flex for tonight's game, pitching number 18, Haley Pena. Your reserves for your Eastview Patriots tonight are number nine, Ella Adams. Number 10, Colby Trapp. Number 11, Kenzie Guajardo. Number 15, Alana Rivera. Number 24, Addie Cruz. And number 34, Dakota Eshelman. East U is led by head coach Kerry Wright and assistant coach Shane Moses, assistant coach Adam Lichtenstein, and assistant coach Kyle Sanford. And now, if you're able, we'd like for you to stand as we honor our nation with the national anthem. Folks, we ready for a ball game tonight. It's, it is windy, and as you can probably hear the wind whipping around with the mic that we have. So it's going to be top of the first here, and we're going to go ahead and go through defensive lineman for your Lady Patriots out in left field. Number five, Bella Wajardo. Center fielder number, number four is in Donna. Right fielder number 17, Clara Ortega, getting her first start of the district season. And third base is number two, Jaden Gonzalez. Short, or excuse me, that's third base, Jaden Gonzalez, my bad. Shortstop is number six, Maddie Rose. You have Alina Torres, number one, starting at second base. Number 16, Kendall Sanford is playing first. And behind the dish tonight is number three, Kenley Cervenka. And on the mound, number 18, Haley Pena. For Pflugerville, they're going to have number one, Zania Reese, leading off, followed by Abby Nunez and Lauren Jackson.
And your Patriots tonight are decked out and white tops, blue pants. On the white top, they have a, a blue Patriots written with a red trim. And Flugerville's decked out in the gray uniforms. It says Panthers on the front, all in yellow. So the, the belt and the socks are yellow. So first pitch, and that's going to be ball one. Last time these two teams met it was March 12th during spring break. And your Lady Patriots came out with a 12 to 4 victory. It's going to be interesting to see tonight if uh, what happens when the ball gets hit up in the air. Because as, as we mentioned, the uh, the ball's whipping, or, or the flags and the wind's just kind of whipping around, so it could wreak some havoc. Next pitch is strike on the outside part of the plate, and this makes it two and two. Outfielders are playing really shallow right now, which, of course, not expecting Reese to drive it too much, and plus the wind's blowing in pretty hard. Ball's going to be hit the right field to Ortega. She gets it. And makes a throw to first, but not in time. So Reese is going to start out with a base hit. Now batting, number eight, Abby Nunez. So Abby Nunez is coming up. She's the left fielder for the Panthers. First pitch, Reese is going to try to take second, and she does. So that was a strike by Pena, but Coach Peterson really being aggressive to start out the game here with sending Reese on the first pitch, getting in, a, getting a runner into scoring position. Ball runs down and in, and it's going to be fouled. Goes straight down and hits Nunez while she's in the batter's box. So that's a foul ball. So 0-2 count. So this is where if you're a Pena, you want to kind of get it off the plate a bit here. That was a good 0-2 pitch, trying to get Nunez to uh, chase it. Foul back. So the Patriots last game was against Bastrop and came out with a win there. And Nunez gets it over to Rose. And that's going to be wild throw. And that's going to move the runners over to third and second on the air. Now batting number 25, Lauren Jackson. It looked like that throw was not going to be in time to get Nunez, but with the errant throw, it allows the runners to get the second and third. So Jackson's up with runners in second and third. Nice pitch by Pena. Trying to keep it down in the zone so Jackson can't really get any lift on it if she does hit it. Ball's fouled to the right side. So... A lot of clouds in the sky. Now 
Not as, quite as bad as last night, of course, with all the rain and heavy thunderstorms. Two balls, two strikes. Ball's going to be tapped over to Torres. She's going to throw it on over to Sanford and is going to get the out. And the ball's thrown over Gonzalez's head by, by Sanford, but uh, the runner is not moving. I think Coach Peterson was asking if that actually went into the dugout a little bit. And in that case, the runner would have been able to advance one base. So we've got a wild pitch, and that's going to be two to nothing. That's Nunez is going to score. So Pflugerville come out right now. This is Nalia Mackey, catcher. And she hits it, and it's going to fall. Fair. Oh, they're going to call a foul. They called it foul. <laughs> I think now they're wanting to know. Yeah, they're, they're asking to uh, to appeal that to see uh, if they can get a second opinion. It honestly. They're going to call it a foul ball. And Peterson's not happy with that call. That was, from our angle, very close. It looked like it, on a normal day it probably would have been fair. But uh, this wind just kept blowing and kind of pushed it over the line. So one ball, two strikes. Like foul tip, but that's going to be a swing and a miss, and that should be the inning. Oh, my bad. I was looking at the wrong thing. So it is two outs. So now you got number five, Braylon Williams. Or she's number six. Looks like what jersey she's wearing is just a, the number that they put on the lineup isn't the one that she's wearing, but uh, that's okay. So another foul ball. So Flugerville quickly jumping out to a two nothing lead. In the first inning. Two balls, one strike, two outs. The ball's hit. It's gonna go past Bella in left field and that's gonna be a stand up double for Williams. Now batting number seven, Abby Lemon. All right, number seven, Abby Lemons, the center fielder is up. Two outs, bottom first now. It's going to be 
Williams is going to get to third on a so just the recap one ball one strike lemons up the bat and they have Williams at third base with a two to nothing lead here in the top of the first Lemons fouls it away. One ball, two strikes. Pena's looking to uh, get this last strike here so he can get her batters a chance. Oh, the ball's hit up in the air. And, and Donna ranges over to her right, makes the catch, but not without – Flugerville getting two runs on three hits, one left on base. We're going to go to the bottom of the first. Uh, Flugerville two, Eastview zero. All right, welcome back, folks, to Patriot Park. We're Lady Patriots trying to get some runs together, get some good hits, and uh, make up for this 2 nothing deficit here in the bottom of the first. One of the uh, telltale signs or really kind of uh, patterns you've seen this year is the Patriots have always typically done a really good job after they get runs scored against them. They'll come right back and uh, score some runs, but – Right now, we've got uh, Maddie Rose leading it off, followed by Bella Guajardo and Alina Torres. As far as the defense for Flugerville, they got Nunez in left field, Lemons in center, Fagan in right. Have Williams at third, Reese at short, Mendiola at second. And Jackson at first, Naomi Jackson at first, and Lauren Jackson on the mound, and Nalia Mackey. Behind the plate. So last time when uh, Eastview played Pflugerville in spring break, it looks like Pflugerville's made a few different changes to their Offense and defense. 2 1 count. Jackson, last time she was. Jackson was a uh, was a catcher last time. And Mendiola was the pitcher. So Flugerville, the good start, and it's going to be called a ball. Three balls, two strikes. Uh, 
Now it's going to be ball four. So now Bella's up, Bella Guajardo. Now batting number five, Bella Guajardo. This is a spot a lot of times you see Coach Coach Ryan either likes to run Maddie, Maddie on the first pitch and maybe uh, Bella lay down a bunt. But we'll see. And first pitch is strike. It actually looked like that was a strike, but it looked like um, Mackey made a good throw down to second base, but Reese was, wasn't quite sure if she had it. Looked like the ball might have beat Rose just for a split second, but uh, Maddie came in on the back side of the bag and had a stolen base there. And good job by, uh, by Maddie on reading the defense there. Bella goes down to act like she's going to bunt. Third baseman crashes, and shortstop was caught flat-footed, just kind of not paying attention there. And that basically left third base open all by itself, and so Maddie was able to just stroll right on in, standing up. One ball, two strike. The sun just peeked out from the clouds. Ball is hit up in foul territory and it's gonna go continue to go foul. And so Bella's gonna come back. Got a one two count. In case, uh, case you don't know, Bella is actually the only senior on the team, and she's going to get a base hit, and that ball is going to get past Nunez, and Nunez catches up to it, but not before Bella gets the second on a double and an RBI knocking in Maddie Rose. So Lena Torres <laughs> is coming up and she's second baseman. Ball is bunted by Torres. Jackson's gonna get up and make a throw and she is safe. Number four, Izzy Andana. So now number four, Izzy Andana, kind of at the bat. She's here lately. She's getting some really good swings on the on the balls, hitting the ball hard. Wonder if Coach Wright is going to have her take and maybe have Torres go ahead and take second base, and she does. So we got Torres at second and Wajardo at third. And Donna fouls it back. 0 2 count. So Izzy, two runners in scoring position. And she's going to foul off to the right side. Nobody's going to be. Looks like it hits the top of the visiting dugout. Currently, right now, you have Coach Wright coaching third base and Coach Moses at first. Next pitch. Called strike three. Now batting number 16, Kendall Sanford. That was a good pitch by, by Jackson, but that was pretty very borderline. <laughs> so uh, 
Got Sanford up. First pitch, ball. So right now, if you're if you're Sanford, you want to try to pull it. But you can see Jackson's been trying to throw an outside part of the plate. Boss thrown down from Mackey to Williams. Ball down and away. Got Cervenko on deck. And a tap, ball right to Williams, and she throws it home, and that's going to get Bella home for the second run of the game for your Lady Patriots. So right. Sanford with a swing and bunt, Number RBI. Eight, <laughs> so Kenley Cervenka's up. Figured they'll probably try to get Sanford over to second on this pitch. Sabranka goes for the bunt, or kind of shows bunt, but uh, ball gets away from Mackey. And Sanford's up to second, and Torres scores. So Lady Patriots, as I mentioned at the beginning of the uh, the inning, is one of the MOs for this team. It seems like every time we uh, give up some runs, we always do a really good job of coming right back and, and getting those back. So now 2-0, heading into the bottom of the first, and now we got three. Yeah, we got the old wind gust. Going on. Shows to be about 68 degrees outside. So for my wife, that means needs to go put on a fire at the house. <laughs> oh, the ball's hit deep for Savanka. And that, that ball kept <laughs> getting carried. She had a lot of distance on it, but uh, that ball just kept carrying. Carrying, 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 and getting pushed so far foul. I ended up probably 100 feet foul. By a wild pitch. That's going to get Sanford over to third base. Which that's significant there because now there's another pass ball or wild pitch, Patriots can uh, get another run with potentially not even having to, to hit for it. That's a swing and a miss, and that's going to be a full count for Cervenka. Right now, I think what she's going to want to do is just kind of Shorten her swing a little bit, just put the bat on the ball. Nice pitch by Jackson. Number 12, Olivia Garza. So Jackson was kept kind of pitching middle out and on that last pitch, threw on the inside part of the plate. So changed her eyesight a little bit. And Olivia Garza's up. That was a good stop by Mackey. If she wouldn't have blocked that ball, then uh, I think Sanford would easily have scored. So a nice play there. Ball's hit up the middle, and that's going to be a base hit for Garza. 
and Lemons ranges over, and Garza is going to walk into second base. And Garza is going to get a... Garza gets an RBI out of that. So now Clara Ortega getting her first start in district tonight. Starting out in right field. <laughs> Good eye there by Ortega. So if Ortega can get on, that means that, well, the ball keeps traveling, 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 and it is caught by Fagan. That ball just kept carrying over towards the, uh, the bullpen, and Fagan did a good job of just keep tracking it down and made the catch, but the Lady Patriots get four runs on four hits and one left on base. And we're going to go to the top of the second. Eastview four, Pflugerville two. All right, we're back. The top of the second, we got Noemi Jackson followed by Bella Palomo and Tiana Fagan. That's number seven, eight, nine hitters for Pflugerville. Pena starts out with a fastball. About knee high. Ball's tap foul. Towards Patriot dugout. Right now, you wonder if, how they're going to attack Jackson right now. Do you think they're going to pitch up and away? Wasn't away. It was up. If you can get it just in that right spot right there, batter a lot of times will swing at it just because it looks like a beach ball up there, and you think you can hit it, and it just goes right by you. Nice. Pitch there by opinion. That's going to be first out of the inning. All right, Bella Palomo.
Nice pitch by Pena. Ball's popped up to Gonzalez over third. Just comes in a couple steps, makes the catch. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Now batting number 13, Tiana Fagan. So Tiana Fagan's up. You always like to see this too. You always talk about the you know, we talked about the <clears throat> the runs that Pflugerville scored in, in Eastview coming back and, and scoring and then taking the lead. But what's equally as important is that next inning when the opposing team bats, you just shut them down. Right now, Pena's one strike away. Oh, looks like, did she get hit? I guess she did. No, I think she was, it looked like she was going after the ball, and I think, okay, they finally got that squared away. Because if the ball hits you and you're in the act of swinging at it, then uh, it's a strike if you miss it. Ball's head over to Maddie Rose. She scoops it. Makes the throw, and that's going to be safe for Fagan. Going to get an infield hit. Zaniah Reese. Reese last time. Had a single last time to start the, the game. Ended up scoring the first run of the game for Pflugerville. First pitch, Fagan's going to go to go down, and that should be that one was uh, interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Because from my viewpoint, it looked like she held on to it, but if I think if her her hand, my, I don't know if her hand, oh, they're saying she juggled it. Says so she was juggling it. So, Blue saying that uh, the ball was being juggled at the time. That was a nice throw by Cervenka. Put it right on the bag. Sometimes that's hard, that's hard because if that runner's coming in and they're hitting the, the glove at the same time they're coming in, then you have that potential of the ball kind of getting uh, dislodged a little bit. <coughs> so 3 0 count. So, Reese, I would expect her to probably take here. And she does, so that's 3-1 count. Frugalville's got a runner at second, got Fagan. Of course, Reese is the top of the lineup for Pflugerville. Ball's tap over to Pena, and she gets it, throws it on over to Sanford, and that's going to do it uh, for Pflugerville here in the top of the second. That was uh, Flugerville got no runs on one hit, one left on base. We're going to go to the bottom of the second, 4-2 Eastview.
Uh, welcome back to Patriot Park. Thanks for joining. We couldn't do it without uh, Eastview Softball Booster Club and the sponsors. I want to go ahead and give some shout outs to our sponsors tonight. Our Gold Glove sponsors include Gus's Drug and Novak Construction. Our other Gold Glove sponsors who are returning from 2023 are Colby's Nana and Blue Monkey Chiropractic and Wellness. And then we have our diamond sponsors, which are Whitaker Plumbing and Whirly Bird Roofing and Restoration. If you want to learn more about the sponsors or how to become one, please go to www.patriots-softball.com for more details on all sponsors and to learn how your business could sponsor our program. So now we have Jaden Gonzalez, third baseman up. Looking to get things going here in the bottom of the second. Balls hit, nice hit to the right field. Fagan's uh, bobbles it, but that's a base hit for Gonzalez, and that was a nice opposite field hit. That's exactly what you like to see. If the pitcher's going to – Pitch you on the outside part of the plate. You just let it travel a little bit towards you and then uh, just shoot it to the opposite field. And that's exactly what she did. Now back up to the top of the lineup with Maddie Rose. She walked last time and scored the first run of the game. And she's going to try to lay one down and ends up being a foul. Lady Patriots already have five hits out of nine batters so far. And the ball's hit up to Maddie Rose, and Fagan's going to have it, and Gonzalez going to trot back to first base. Now Bella Guajardo. Now Bella Guajardo, last time she hit a double into left center field gap. She scored a run as well. Ball's outside. Mackey's done a good job so far behind the plate for Pflugerville. Made some good, good stops back there. Ball's bunted by Bella, and it's going to be thrown out at first base by Jackson over to Paloma. So it's going to be two outs with Alina Torres. Up, she's one for one, got a bunt on the evening. Bunt single. Oh, it's just outside. So Torres trying to Keep the inning going. Got two outs. Gonzalez at second base. Nice pitch swing and a miss. And that's going to do it for your Patriots in the bottom of the second. We're going to go to the top of the third. Eastview four. Flickerville two.
All right, Abby Nunez is up. She hit a single last time. So she's one for one on the evening. Ball's popped up, and Torres takes a few steps back and then immediately has to run in about five, six steps. That's due to the wind there, and she still gets it, though, and that's going to be the first out of the inning. All right, Lauren Jackson grounded out last time to the right side. Jackson, last time when uh, Patriots played Pflugerville, she was the starting catcher, and tonight she's the starting pitcher. So, very versatile player. A swing and a miss. Coach Peterson, uh, they're asking for a timeout, so she's going to talk to Jackson. up it says wind did you call a timeout that's a bad joke but uh, <laughs> a lot of wind out there folks just saying the two balls one strike balls inside gonna run the count to three and one Swing and a miss. That's going to make it a full count. Payoff pitch. About to come up. Swing and a miss. And good job by Pena. Falling, down, or falling back in the count 3-1 and then working her way back to get a strikeout. So that's two outs in the top of the third. Mackey coming up, she struck out last time. Struck out swinging. Just to uh, let you know that uh, Friday, Eastview will be playing at Hendrickson with a 7 p.m. start. SHN Sports will be broadcasting the game. Going to be, uh, won't be broadcasting that day or my uh, counterpart, Kyle Lowe, and a great broadcaster. He'll be uh, calling the game on Friday. Ball's tapped over to Gonzalez. She gets it, makes a throw, and and I think I don't know if Gonzalez had a hard time just kind of getting hold of the ball, but she double pumped the throw, and that made that close that play really close. So Coach Wright's going to go out to the ump and uh, ask him to uh, appeal to the home plate ump. They're talking it over. Our 
car. Wild pitch by Pena. That's going to put Mackey over. I got Williams up. A foul ball by Williams down the left field line. Going to make it one ball, one strike. Nice pitch by Pena, and that's going to be strike two. Try to get this last out of the inning. Try to prevent Flugerville from scoring any runs. Down and away. Two balls, two strikes. Balls popped up to Matty Rose, and that's going to be the last out of the inning. And that's going to do it for Flugelville here in the top of the third. We're going to go to the bottom of the third, Eastview 4, Flugelville 2. All right, welcome back to uh, Patriot Park. We, Lady Patriots have a 4-2 lead going into the bottom of the third. We've got Izzy and Donna followed by Kendall Sanford and Izzy Kelly Cervenka. Izzy is 0-1 on the night, had a strikeout looking last time. So, cut there by Indana. Looks like she's just underneath it. Outfielders are playing really shallow, which Indana's got the pop, got some pop in her bat. So if she can get a hold of one, she can definitely uh, get it past these outfielders, but. Of course, you're battling the wind today as well. Got to really protect the plate here. Last time, oh, swing and bunt there. Gets it over, so Jackson to Paloma for the out. Now batting number 16, Kendall Sanford. A 
Sanford last time had a had the old swinging single, bunt single down third baseline. So she's one for one. Well, the sun's really popping out. It's everybody on the uh, right side of the bag or right side of uh, the field. That sun can affect you if balls hit up in the air because that'd be first base, second baseman, and right fielder would be looking right into it. Oh, the balls ran up and in on Sanford. So was able to get out of the way of that one. So it was three balls, no strikes. Of course, you expect her probably to take this pitch. And she does, and that's going to be ball four on four pitches. Now, Shervink is coming up. She's 0 for 1. Struck out looking last time. Now batting number three, Kinsley Cervenka. A six straight balls for Jackson. Make that seven. This is one I wouldn't even wouldn't even attempt to even swing at. There you go. So now Srebenka made her throw a strike, so now one's in the zone. I know she'll be taking a rip at it. Swing and a miss. Ball's popped up in the infield. That could cause some problems, and Paloma comes in and makes the catch. Tell you right there that um, that play is tougher than it actually looks because now look, kind of looking up, see the sun a little bit, and just being on the infield when the ball goes straight up, and with this wind, you didn't know if it's going to carry. So that was a good job by Paloma. Now Garza is up. She had a base hit last time, so she's one for one. And she hits it hard, and it's going to go into the gap in right center field. And coach is going to wave Sanford around third base, and she is going to score. And Garza with an RBI double. Hit the ball very, very hard. My Clara Ortega. Looks like we're going to have us a, uh, a courtesy runner for Garza. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a pinch runner. So Ella Adams is going to be out on second base here. So last time Clara, she's 0 for 1. She flat out to Tiana Fagan out in foul territory in right field. Ball's down and in. I 
The Patriots up 5-2, bottom of the third. So Ortega doing a really good job just trying to make Jackson throw her some strikes. It's going to be 3-1 count. Got Gonzalez on deck. Next pitch. It's going to drive the count to full. Full we'll count, two outs. I'll take a swing and a miss, and that's going to be it for the Patriots. In the top of the third, but we tack on one more and we make it five to two. We're going to go to the top of the fourth. East View five, Pflugerville two. Thank you for joining us, HN Sports. This is Keith Burris. All right, we're back at Patriot Park. Your Patriots have a five to two lead. Flickerville has Lemons, Jackson, and Palomo coming up this inning. Lemons flew out to center field last time. Out to Andana. Ball's hit, and it's going to fall for a base hit. And Donna ranges in, gets it, throws it back into Maddie Rose, and that's going to be a single for Lemons. Now batting number 22, Noemi Jackson. Noemi Jackson's up. She's 0 for 1, struck out looking last time. Balls tapped over to Torres. She's going to get the second, and Rose is going to get it. And they're going to call her safe at second base. I think they're going to say Maddie maybe pulled her foot off before she caught the ball. If that play stands, that's going to get Pflugerville runners at first and second with nobody out. I'm sure talking about it, and I'd venture to guess that it changes the decisions probably once every 99 times. <laughs> so they're going to say she is safe. And so 
Jackson gets on due to the fielder's choice. Just like that, though, Flugerville's got something started here in the top of the fourth, only down by three runs and got two runners on right now. Looks like I just want to go over and talk to Coach Wright. So I think that's about it. Also oh, now, I don't know what's going on here. They called her safe. They called her safe. Coach Wright asked to appeal. They call her safe still. And then now, I think they're saying, All right, I'm not quite sure on that one, but Jackson's called out. And that's going to get one out for Swiggerville. So they got Abby Lemons at second base, one out. Got Paloma up. She flew out last time. All right, they're, they called that pitch. They said Paloma actually went for it, and Coach Peterson for a flu was not too happy about that. It's a 2 1 count. A 2 2. Tell you, a lot of excitement the last couple of minutes here. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Lemons on second. Ball's grounded over to Torres. Torres gets it, gets it over to Sanford, and that's going to be the second out of the inning. But Lemons moves over to third base on the out. Now batting number 13. So Tiana Fagan's up. She had an infield single last time. A nice pitch by Pena. I think Blue said it ran off the plate just a tad. That pitch was about the same place. Fagan's going to hit it, and it's going to be a foul ball. Or actually, they call it a fair ball. Yeah. That ball actually looked like it was looked foul from our angle. That ball looked foul from our angle, but uh, they're going to say that it was a fair ball and 
Fagan gets her second hit of the game. Gonna knock in a run. Now back to the one. So Zanaya Reese, one for two, got a single on the ground out today. We've had some kind of uh, unusual calls here over the last last inning. Swing and a miss by Reese. 0-2 count. Five three game. One ball, two strikes. Pena's trying to get this last out. This inning and it's ball's hit back to Pena and it's off her glove. And that's gonna be safe all around. Fagan's gonna Fagan makes it over to third and Reese is at first. It would not surprise me if Fluger, if Reese, if Reese took second base right now because she's got really good speed, and you wonder if Eastview would throw the ball down. The balls, oh, uh, it's no man's land, and that's going to be. One of those softball hits there, and this uh, we got us a five to four game. That was one of those crazy, uh, crazy hits. Just kind of found no man's land, and that's going to make it five to four. Coach Wright's going out to speak to the team and uh, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break we'll be right back I got Jackson up. She is 0 for 2, ground out and struck out swinging. We got some ball game, folks. Next one's fouled back. 0 2 count. Oh, and Jackson swings at that pitch. Well, she lunged at it on the outside part of the plate and got just enough of it to foul it away. So if you're if you're Pena, she keeps throwing the outside part. Maybe she wants to throw a rise ball kind of up and in on her. Balls fouled up or hit over to Torres, and she throws it on over to Sanford. But that's going to do it for Flugerville on the top of the fourth. They tack on two runs and make it a game. Eastview five, Flugerville four.
All right, I want to go ahead and uh, say thank you for coming back here to Patriot Park. I want to go ahead and uh, recognize some of our Patriot sponsors. We got the Silver Slugger sponsors. Those are Honea's Automotive and Double Dave's Pizza Works. We also have Austin Telco FCU, who's also a returning 2023 sponsor. We also have Patriot sponsors, who are the Yard Milkshake Bar and WWT Worldwide Technology Technologies. And the following three uh, sponsors are all returning sponsors. They are Myers Elgin Sausage, Bella Luna Equestrian, and Idea Science. If you'd like to learn more about being a sponsor or want to become one, please go to or go to www.patriots-softball.com for more details on all sponsors and to learn how your business can sponsor our program. Now, Patriots got a close game here. Got Gonzalez up. He's one for one. Had a single to right field last time. If Jackson pitches that pitch again, she needs Gonzalez needs to do like she did last time, just kind of take it to right field. That's going to be swinging a miss. That's going to be first out of the inning, and we're going to be back to the top of the lineup right. with Maddie Rose. Number six, Maddie Rose. Maddie's 0 for one tonight with a walk and a flyout. Ball's hit hard to right field. Fagan uh, misplayed it. It still goes overhead, and Maddie is running, just going around the base, and that's going to be inside the parker, folks. So Maddie Rose with the inside the parker. Fagan was playing pretty shallow. Ball's hit really hard. And she takes a few steps in, but by that time, not only the ball was hit over her head, but being that Maddie Rose is a right-handed hitter, that ball's going to tell out to the line. And Fagan didn't play it that way and, and went to the fence. And, uh, of course, the blazing speed of Maddie Rose got her inside the park home run. But again, we want to reiterate that Flugerville gets two runs in the top of the inning. And first thing happens, Patriots get a run. Now now Bella, Bella gets a base one. hit. And so Lina nice swing. Torres. So Lena Torres is coming up. She's one for two. Had a bunt single and struck out swinging last time. The ball's hit right to Paloma, and she's going to throw it, and it's going to be. That was really close there. Now batting number four, Izzy Antana. So a line drive by Torres right to Paloma. She catches it and tries to get Bella off. Double, Try to double her off at first base is really close, but Bella just got in. Back to the bag, it's, oh, and Donna's 0 for 2 with a strikeout looking and a ground out. I tell you, with, um, with the Patriots, Played Flugerville last time. 
Oh, nice swing by Indana. It's going to be a base hit right up the middle, and they're going to send Bella to third. And she's going to go into third. And on the throw, Indana goes to second base. So a nice line drive base hit single for and Donna, and she gets to second on the throw. So now you're three, three, four hitters. Our top of the lineup actually uh, getting some uh, things going here. Got Sanford up. She's got a single and a walk today. And she's going to hit it down the left field line, and it's going to go foul. Six to four. Runners at second and third. One one count for first baseman Kendall Sanford. A 3 1 count. Got Cervenka on deck. Sanford wants to load it up for her. And the ball. Jackson was wondering where that one was at. That was pretty darn close, but uh, Blue calls it a ball. And just like that, your Patriots have bases loaded with two outs. Sure could use some uh, insurance runs here. Cervenka is 0 for 2. She struck out looking and she popped up last time. So that's going to be 2-0 count. So right now, if you're Savinka, you just you're waiting for that pitch to be able to drive. Looks like they're gonna call a timeout. We're gonna go ahead and get a quick break here. We'll be right back. All right, the recap, we have Wardo at third, and Donna at second, and Sanford at first. Got Cervenka up the bat, 2-0 count, two outs. Next pitch, 3-0. So if you're Cervenka, you, you pretty much just sit on this pitch. Make Jackson throw you a strike before you even attempt to swing at one. So now 3-1. So hitters count, so. And that's gonna be ball four. And a run comes in, makes it seven to four. That's an RBI by Cervenka. Olivia Garza is up, she is Two for two, got a single and a double on the night. Swinging the bat really well, hitting a couple of hard line drives. So it looks like Cervenka is going to be courtesy ran for by. Courtesy run for the catcher, number 11, Kinsey Guajardo. Yeah, 
Lindsey Wilharto is going to be the courtesy runner for Cervenka at first base. Got a lot of speed, so anything that Garza hits in the gap, if she can hit something in the gap, I think Wilharto can uh, score from first. Balls popped up to Paloma in the infield. She ranges over and she's going to make the catch. But Patriots gave up two in the top of the fourth, and they came back with two of their own in the bottom of the fourth. We're going to go to the fifth, seven to four. All right, back, welcome back to Patriot Park. Seven to four Patriots in the top of the fifth. Malia Mackey leading off, followed by Braylon Williams, and then Abby Lemons. Mackey is 0 for 2, struck out swinging and got on due to an error last time. popped up it's gonna be foul one ball two strikes Patriots with a three run lead balls hit hard the center field and and Donna runs back, and uh, I think that ball was hit a little bit. It was hit hard, but uh, that wind just kind of made it hit a wall. Now batting number six, Braylon Williams. And, and Donna gets to it easy. But, uh, of course, District 23-5A again coming into tonight's district standings. Yeah, Georgetown nine and one in district. Elgin at eight and two, and Eastview at eight and two. Uh, you had Bastrop and Hendrickson both at five and five. And then you had Pflugerville at three and seven. Cedar Creek at two and eight, and Pflugerville Conley at zero and ten. Of course, the uh, top 
four teams make the playoffs. Right now, it looks like you know Georgetown, Elgin, and Eastview are pretty much haven't gotten in yet mathematically, but got the the greatest chances of making the playoffs. And then, uh, really, the, where you see the battle is probably between Bastrop and Hendrickson for that fourth place spot. So Williams thought she had to walk there. But it was called a strike. Balls hit back the penny off the glove and balls hit off Pena's glove and that's gonna be should be an infield single for single for Williams. I don't think that was a wide throw by Mandy Rose, but she wasn't going to be able to get her anyway. Abby Lemons is up. She's one for two on the night. Flew out the center first time and last time got a base hit to left center field. I'll tell you, Flugerville's really battling. Next pitch, strike, and Williams are going to go and get the steal. Let's go put a runner in scoring position for Flugerville. We're not going back to the first time Patriots played them. Patriots jumped out to a quick, like, either 8 or 10, nothing, something like that, and it seemed like every since then, Flugerville's really – Played good, you know, good ball against the uh, Patriots. Patriots trying to push their uh, district record to nine and two. <laughs> Ball's fouled away. And again, this Friday night, so in two days, Patriots going to be at Hen Hendrickson at 7 p.m. And then next Tuesday at Georgetown at 7 p.m. And then next Friday for the district finale. Nice swing and a miss there for uh, Pena. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Then next Friday against uh, Flickerville Connolly here at Patriot Park to finish up district play. So that's going to be uh, the last home game of the season. I okay, got Jackson up. Struck out looking first time and got on due to a Filder's choice. Ball's hit foul down the right side. Wind's still blowing good, but it's, it seems like it's down down just slightly. It's not as vigorous as it was a little bit earlier. Balls fouled off the, uh, looks like maybe the handle of the bat. So it's going to be one ball, two strikes. Balls fouled back. It's going to be a ball low, so two balls, two strikes. Pena trying to get the last out of the inning here. Ball 
And nice pitch by Pena. And it's going to be strikeout looking. And we're going to go to the bottom of the fifth. Eastview seven. We're going to go four. All right, bottom of the fifth. Grab Ortega, Gonzalez, and Rose coming up. Ortega on the night is uh, 0 for 2. Flew out. To right field and struck out swinging last time. Ball is going to be hit down the right field line and it's going to be foul. About 0 2 count. Ortega gets it, gets it over Reese. Reese with the throw, and that's going to be safe. And so Ortega's going to get an infield single there. Now batting number two, Jaden Gonzalez. Jaden Gonzalez, one for two on the evening. Got a single first time and struck out swinging last time. And she attempts to go for the bunt and doesn't make contact, so it's going to be strike one. Swing and a miss. Makes a one, two count. And Gonzalez just gets a hair of that ball. I tell you, just staying alive. Oh, 
Ball's outside. 2-2. Two -two. Got Maddie Rose on deck who had an infield to Parker last time. So she uh, looking to turn over the lineup and that's going to be swing and a miss. Now batting number six, Maddie Rose. Maddie's one for two on the evening. She's had a walk, a fly out, and hit an inside the park home run last time. Which is still kind of, after she hit that inside the parker last time, if you look at the uh, outfielders are still playing fairly shallow. Ball's hit to the infield, and Paloma runs over and drops the ball there. She got over there. Looked like it uh, made it into her glove, but she just couldn't quite hold on to it. Jackson trying to throw a change up there. A little bit low. Ball's hit out to... Faking out in right field. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Now that is number five, Bella Guajardo. Now Bella Guajardo's up. She is two for three on the night. Got, a, got out trying to bunt earlier in the game. And has got a single and a double. Ball's foul back. One ball, one strike. That's going to be a wild pitch by Jackson. He gets away from Mackey, and Ortega is going to go head on down to second base. Oh, there we go. That's going to be third ball. Looked like it just kind of slipped out of Jackson's hand. It's going to be ball four, and we're going to have two runners on for Alina Torres. Yeah, There's one for three. He's got a bunt single, st struck out swinging, and popped up last time. Got runners at first and second. We are number three and four hole hitters. So this is what uh, the Patriots want at this time. Good position to be in. Ryan, it looks like the wind has died down quite a bit over the last 10, 15 minutes. One ball, two strike. Ball off, just off the edge there. Torres does a good job of not chasing it. Ball's going to hit back to Jackson. She has it. 
gonna flip it on over to Jackson to Jackson and that's gonna be the third out of the inning. We're gonna go to the top of the sixth, East View seven for Google Four. All right, Bella Paloma was coming up. She is 0 for 2 on the night. Popped up and grounded out last time to Torres. Down to the last two innings. Eastview trying to hold on for the victory. Frugalville's definitely put up a fight tonight. A 2 0 count. We have Fagan up next and back to the top of the lineup with Reese. I think of uh, Plumo's going to take this pitch. Sure enough, it's right down the middle and strike one. Ball's filed back, and that's going to be full count. So Pena's battled her way back into this at bat. Only need six more outs. Get the W. Next pitch swing and a miss. First out of the inning, and that was on Pena's 110th pitch this evening. She has 70 strikes and 40 balls, so pretty good ratio there. That was Pena's sixth strikeout tonight. Well, Fagan, two for two. Flugville's got some good production. She's our nine, nine hole hitter, and she's uh, two for two on the evening. So, really good production from the bottom of the lineup. Grounds it over to Gonzalez. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Now they're back to the top of the line that was an IRS. Just two for three on the evening. Had two singles and a ground out. That sun is just about to go down past the horizon. 
out just to the left of the left field line. Right away. One ball, two strikes. If you're pinning, you, you really you can get this out right here and get three up, three down. Get yourself that much closer to another victory in district. Ball's going to be hit to right center field, and Ortega ranges over, makes the catch, and that's going to do it for the Panthers on top of the six. We're going to go to the bottom of the six, East View seven, Flagerville four. All right, welcome back to Patriot Park. Want to go ahead and give some shout outs to some of our sponsors tonight. For our diamond sponsors, we have Weidecker Plumbing and Whirly Bird Roofing and Restoration. Those are our diamond sponsors. Our gold glove sponsors are Gus's Drug and Novak Construction. And then we also have the following two sponsors who are re returning 2023 sponsors, they're Colby's, Colby's Nana and Monkey Kai Practic and Wellness. I want to say again, thank you to our sponsors. And if you want to learn more about our sponsors or learn how to become a sponsor, please go to www.patriots-softball.com for more details on our, all sponsors and to learn how your business can sponsor our program. So again, thank you, SHN Sports. I'd like to thank the sponsors as well, plus Eastview Booster Club and everybody who supports us. So we have and Donna up right now. She is one for three. She's struck out looking. Hit a ground down and a single last time. So three one. Now she's looking for something to drive. Still good hitters count. Jackson's going to have to get most of the plate, but uh, ball's in the dirt, and that's going to be a walk for Indana. Now batting number 16, Kendall Sanford. So Kendall, one for one on the evening, had a single and two walks. the Patriots, I'm sure you'd love to get some insurance runs in the uh, bottom of the inning here. All right, one ball, two strikes.
two balls and two strikes. So Sanford looking something, looking for something to uh, to drive. But I tell you, she's a lot of her base hits go to the opposite field. And the ball is going to be hit out to left field. And Nunez ranges over to her left, makes the catch. And that's going to be the first out of the inning. Now batting number three, Kaylee Cervenka. Cervenka is 0 for 2 on the evening. Struck out looking the first time. Fly out the second, or pop out the second. And then a walk last time. And Donna threatens to go, but uh, decides against it. And that was a nice effort by Mackey right there on the foul ball. One ball, one strike. But if you, uh, anybody likes to watch the game on Friday, of course, like I said, SHN Sports going to be carrying it. But also, if you in the mood to go watch it live, it's going to be down in Hendrickson, which if you know where Eastview High School is. You just go straight down the toll road. The ball's going to be popped up in foul territory, and nobody's going to be able to get to that. So it's probably about a eh, about 15-minute drive down the toll road. Oh. Yep, that was almost got away <laughs> or did get away from her. Yeah. Right, the ball's hit up in the air. Nunez is going to range back, going to make the catch for the second out of the inning. All right, they're going to they're going to intentionally walk Garza. So Adams is going to go in for Garza as courtesy runner. Number 9. So Ortega, she's one for three, had a base hit last time. She's flown out, struck out swinging, and had a single last time. So one for three on the evening.
Uh, ball's hit by Ortega over to Reese. Uh, and throws it over to second, and Adams is going to be safe, so everybody's safe on the fielder's choice. Now batting, number two, Jaden Gonzalez. Hey, it's all you, Jaden, come on. All right, got Jaden Gonzalez up. She is one for three on the evening. She had a single first time and has struck out swinging the last two at bats. Base hit right here. Could play her a couple, couple RBIs. Nowhere for anybody to go. Uh, one ball, one strike. I can just get something right here. Middle in. Ball's going to be hit up to Reese. She gets it, and she's going to flip it over to second, and that's going to do it for the Patriots in the uh, bottom of the sixth. It's going to be seven to four going into the top of the seventh. Three more outs. Lady Patriots can go home with a W, so we'll be right back. All right, top of the seventh. Three more outs. Patriots have to get, and uh, Pena's going to have to go through Nunez, Jackson, and Mackey. Now batting number eight, Abby Nunez. So Nunez is up. She is two for three on the evening. Got two singles and it's flown out. So Pena looking to go get her ninth win. And the team's looking to get the ninth win of district. Ball's popped up, and Maddie Rose is just going to take a few steps to her right. Going to make the catch. That's going to be one out. Now batting number 25, Lauren Jackson. So Lauren Jackson is up. She is 0 for 3 on the night. She's grounded out twice and struck out swinging. Balls two. Lady Patriots playing, like I said, Hendrickson on Friday. Which, if uh, 
player game. Got a great shot at winning that game. We just can't look forward to the uh, game against Georgetown. Torres gets it, and it's going to be safe. Do I mean error on Torres? So Jackson gets on. But anytime you play that crosstown rival, Georgetown, you. Quincy Runner coming in at first base. Number three, just said the new day. I mean, anytime you play that uh, crosstown rival, you you definitely very uh, emotionally charged game. And so you don't want to skip over that Hendrickson game to look for that Georgetown game. We've got to go in and uh, really focus on taking care of business Friday night. And so Mackey's up. She's 0 for 3 on the night. Struck out swinging, flew out, and got on due to an error. Balls filed straight back. If your opinion, the one thing you want to keep from doing is getting the town run up at the plate. So I want to focus on getting attacking Mackey right now. Being aggressive at the plate. The ball's popped up and just going to fall foul. Didn't go high enough back there to for anybody to really get up underneath it, so. Sure turned into a pleasant evening. Two balls, two strikes. Ball's filed back. So that was Pena's 132nd pitch of the night. Fouled about 10 feet outside of third baseline. Be able to go after Mackey because if you get Williams up with two on, then you got the time run, so you don't want it to get that exciting. Oh, nice pitch by Pena, swing and a miss, big strikeout, and that's gonna put 
Williams up with Pflugerville down to their last out. That was Pena's seventh strikeout of the evening. Ball's going to be tapped over the mound. Torres gets it and flips it over to Rose, and that's going to do it for the game. Your Lady Patriots get the W with a 7-4 win over the Pflugerville Lady Panthers, and it's going to push our record to 9-2 and two in district. We'll be right back for a wrap-up, and uh, we'll be back in about two minutes. All right, welcome everybody uh, back to Patriot Park where Eastview Lady Patriots come out tonight with a 7-4 to four win. The line on tonight's game is Pflugerville had four runs on nine hits, no errors, and seven left on base. And your Eastview Lady Patriots had seven runs on ten hits, three errors, and 11 left on base. A couple of the... Uh, Hits tonight, we had, like I said, 10 hits tonight, and we were led. We had uh, Bella Wajardo and Olivia Garza both had two hits apiece. And Maddie Rose, Alina Torres, Izzy Andana, Kendall Sanford, and Clara Ortega, uh, as well as Jaden Gonzalez, all had one hit apiece. Uh, so it just kind of spread the wealth around the team there and uh, good team victory. Uh, as far as the pitchers, uh, pitchers concerned tonight, you had – uh, Haley Pena pitched all seven innings, had 137 pitches, 87 strikes, 50 balls. Uh, she had seven strikeouts, two were looking, and five were swinging. She had nine hits, gave up nine hits, and uh, she had uh, four earned runs uh, on tonight. So, uh, like I said, Lady Patriots push a record to nine and two in district and uh, going to be heading down to Hendrickson on Friday night at 7 p.m. SHN Sports will be there. Uh, Kyle Lowland will be calling the game and uh, uh, does a great job. And so, um, you know, the Patriots keep rolling in district here and we're getting ready to uh, make that playoff push. And so, I uh, want to say thank you again for, to all of our sponsors, Eastview Bo Booster Club and all the fans of, of the team and uh, family and friends. And uh, just want to thank you for all your support. But uh, this is Keith Burris with SHN Sports. And hope everyone.